Hello. Hi, youth. Hi, youth. Hi. Older youth and younger youth. Hello. For the heat that you've blessed us with, Lord, thank you for the rain. Father, let it rain in this house, not literally like it did at Walmart today, but let it rain in the spirit, Father God, with your presence so strong, Lord. We desire nothing more than to please you, Jesus. And we want to take this time and set it aside. There's so many other things we could have done tonight on a Friday night to end our work week and our school week. But Father, we come in this house to worship you alone and say you are worthy. You deserve our attention. You deserve our praise, Father God. You deserve to be lifted up because there's no other name above Jesus. There's no other name that can save. There's no other name that can cast out demons. It's only by the power of Jesus. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're in this place. We thank you for the anointing upon this team tonight, Father. We thank you for the word that you've given to Pastor Josh today. Give us ears to hear and heart open to receive all that you have, God. Holy Spirit, only you could take the word spoken and, and personalize it to each of us tonight, God. We thank you that you died for us, God, that you bled out for us, Jesus. But the grave couldn't hold you. On the third day, you rose again. And so we thank you that that same power that rose you from the dead is living on the inside of us and that you have fully equipped us to go and preach the gospel to every creature of the world, Father God, to lay hands on the sick and they can recover, Lord. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that we get to be a part of the global church, the body of Christ. And we fully submit to you as the head tonight. So Jesus, have your way in this house. Holy Spirit, have your way. We are expecting mighty miracles, a mighty move in Jesus' name. And everybody shout it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the King.
sing that without music right now, Love of God. Could we just sing that together? us up tonight, God. Rejuvenate us. Fill us up with passion and compassion, God. With love for the hurting and dying, God. With faith, with power. Fill us up, Lord. We need more. There's a lost and dying world out there, God, and we need more. Fill us up with boldness. Father, you told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Give us courage. Give us strength, Lord. Let us do what you've called us to do, God. To reach and save the world. Father, we ask that you be in this house tonight, God. Can you continue to speak, continue to move, 
Have your way and your will in this house, Father. Let no man or woman stand in between that, God. Father, we thank you tonight. I thank you for each and every individual here, God. I thank you for the youth here tonight, God. Speak to us all, Father. We love you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said, amen, amen, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Why don't you guys stand up for a few moments? Greet your neighbor. Tell somebody you love them, and we'll continue. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We need you, Father. Be in this house, God. Have your way, your will, Lord God. Nothing more, nothing less, God, than just what you have for us, Lord. Father, speak tonight, God. Move tonight. Direct our path, God. Give us faith tonight, Lord, because we know that faith <laughs> comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And Father, tonight, as your word is spoken, do a work in our hearts. The level of faith that you've given us, Father, begin to raise it, God. Begin to do something powerful, God, so we can move mountains and we can change the world, Lord. Father, we need more. Yes, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Father, the heart that's broken in this house tonight, God. I ask that you heal it, God. Father, not that you put a band-aid on it, Father, but you completely heal it. Restore them, God. Renew them, Lord. Father, that when they leave this house, Father, they see that they've been changed. They've been made whole, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now, we declare healing in this house, God. Church, just lift your hands to heaven right now. And those of y'all that need this healing, just begin to receive it. You may be out there right now that you feel like God's let you down in a certain time in your life. That it's almost shattered you, almost broke you. But even today that you say that you're, you're, you're still not where you used to be with Him. But tonight... This stronghold is broken in Jesus' name. Tonight you are healed in the name of Jesus. Just receive it tonight. Know that you've been healed. Know that God made a way. Know that God didn't fail you, nor did he let you down. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. He's still here leading you, and he's still here guiding you. In the name of Jesus, we declare the healing. We declare the deliverance, Father, in this house right now. Father, I ask, Lord God, that you speak through me tonight, Lord, that your words be spoken, not mine, God. Father, I ask tonight, Lord, that, that you anoint the very words that come out of my mouth, Father, that it reaches the hearts and goes where no man can go, God. I can't do this without you, Lord. Lord I need you, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Y'all glad to be here tonight? If I didn't know better, I think we had a crowd of four tonight. I'm going to ask you again. Are y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Now it sounds like we got the multitudes here. I'm telling you what, when people, man, I say this a lot. But I, but I look at the baseball games and, and different sporting events yeah. and how people get excited about a man. 
because he can hit a home run that means absolutely nothing. That he goes up there and does whatever and, and people cheer and they scream and they get excited for something that we'll never even remember. But we are in the house of God that will change your life forever and will not only impact what happens here, but it will impact what happens for eternity. And I'm telling you, church, we've got to get to a place that Christians don't just look like we're, we're blah or we're there, but we're people that look excited and are excited because we've got life and something the world doesn't have. We've got everything that we need to get through this life and to make it to heaven. How exciting is that? Praise the Lord, you're starting to catch on here. Hallelujah. But we really do, but, but we look at individuals in the world, and there's people that look so excited, and, and so often we see the church as a bunch of Debbie Downers. Oh, I'm just, just the trials are just so bad, Pastor. Oh, it's just so hard, Pastor. You don't understand. But the word says, count it all as joy. Count it all as joy that God is doing a greater work in you. That God is doing something preparing you. That God is changing the inside of you and transforming you into who he's called you to be. But it's hard to transform someone that's down like this. We got to get up. We got to get our head up. We got to get excited about what God's doing in our life. And when we go through tests and trials, even though it may be hard, we get excited because we know he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. I mean, that's exciting. That is something that will literally impact our lives and change us. And then I go above and beyond and I think about the big God that we serve, that he's so big that our minds weren't even created to wrap our minds around how big he is. And we begin to, to real, try to figure out how big he is and then realize someone that's that big wants to use us. Someone that's that big literally will put uh, someone else's life in our hands that, that we can go out and help reach them to change their life and change eternity for them. But then we sit back without boldness. We're not strong and courageous so often. We sit back and we go, well, I'm afraid of what someone might think of me or I'm afraid of what might happen or I'm afraid of what the results are or I'm afraid of this or I'm afraid of that. I'm telling you what, there are many times, every time that God tells me to go across the room, let me tell you, I'm afraid. That's not me. I'm not the guy that I never meet a stranger. No, I always meet, I, I, strangers usually stays a stranger. Because I'm not the one that likes to go out and talk to people. I'm not the one that can just start up a conversation. I'm the guy, even in my heathen life, that when there was a party, I was a quiet guy in the corner. But you know what? Then God likes to take your weakness and say, you know what? I want to show myself through this. I want you to know that it ain't you. I think it's awesome when God will take something where it's not us and begin to show us it's not us. But I love that because if God began to use my strength so much, that pride would be so much easier for pride to rise up in me. That if all of a sudden, if I was just a good public speaker, I'm telling you what, I, I went and spoke a week or two ago over at, a, at Freedom House. And even going there, I get nervous. I spoke at another pastor friend's church a month or two back. And I go there and I get nervous. And, and it's just not me. It's hard. But you know what? I'm like, you know what? I want to get through this. If God wants to use me somewhere, I want to be used. Even though I don't want to do it, it's uncomfortable. It makes me feel, uh, feel awkward. And inside, I can be shaken. I mean, every time I prepare a message, let me say, every time I prepare a message, or when I go to prepare one, I'm like, God, I don't know what to say. God, uh, I mean, we preached about everything in the Bible, right? We've told about every story in there. What, what, what else do you want, want, to, want to preach, God? And, and every time he just stirs something up in your heart. Every time he begins to move and do something and, and, and put something in there. But every time I go to prepare, I'm like, God, I don't even know what to prepare, Lord. And he's like, just seek me. 
Even preparing a message isn't all about preparing a message. What happens if a pastor or an individual just goes to prepare a message all the time? Then you're not getting anything out of it. I like to spend time with God and let the message birth out of me, out of my prayer time and my time seeking the face of God. Let something birth out of me. I'm telling you what, when you want to go preach to the world, you go, well, what do I say? Let it be birthed out of you from the prayer time and your time seeking his face. That all of a sudden God begins to stir stuff up in you that when you go out, you just can't contain it anymore. And like I say a lot, you're like Jeremiah where it's like fire shut up in your bones and you begin to say, I can't contain it. When I go places like Bredco or the heathen Starbucks place or whatever, <laughs> heathens need to be reached. But when I go places, I'm telling you what, I'll sit there and I'll hear the word of the Lord tell me what to say. Sometimes not what to say, but just who to go up to. And inside of me, I'm like, absolutely not, God. What if this is wrong? But I'm like, if I'm speaking to God right now, obviously it's right. right. But all of a sudden, it literally, it's like fire shut up in you where you can't even stay still anymore. Some of you have heard this. Many of you have not. But actually, you know what? I'll, I'll get to it in a moment. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 29. The title of my message tonight is being led by the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit. The Spirit, listen, leads you to the promise. Leads you through life. Leads you to a greater life. Leads you to redemption. That, that the Spirit begins to do something in you. And as you begin to follow the, the Spirit and where He leads you, it begins to change your life and it changes lives around, lives around you. When I was in a Starbucks several years ago, and I remember sitting there. Actually, I believe I was in line. I remember the Lord said, you need to speak to this man. And I said, okay. What do you want me to say? He said, you need to speak to him. Okay, well, what do you want me to say? I want you to go up to him and speak to him. I said, all right, Lord, I'm sitting there reading my book. And I kept arguing with God over and over and over again. Finally, I said, all right, Lord, I'll go over there. He said, pray with him. I said, all right. You know, then you start going, well, God will... How do I open that one up? Hey, let me pray with you. I mean, I don't know how to open up a conversation, period. So when it comes to that, it's even harder. So I get up out of my chair. I walk over to him. This is his table. I, I, I walk. I see him, and I just walk right past him, and I go to the restroom. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I come back. I'm like, all right, I'll talk to my way back. I pass them up. I go sit down again. And then I've opened up my book, and I'm trying to read. And, I, and for me, to comprehend something in the first place is very hard. It's only by the grace of God that I can comprehend things. So I I'm, I'm already have struggles doing that. So now God's speaking to me, so I'm definitely not he understanding or hearing anything that I'm reading. Nothing's going to comprehend it. I finally said, fine, Lord, I'll go. I'm wasting my time trying to read when I can't even hear it because your voice is so loud. I get up, I walk over to the gentleman. I said, hey, how you doing? I said, I just felt like I'm supposed to come over and pray for you. He begins to weep. He's been to our church several times now. He begins to weep. He said, please do. I began to pray over him, pray over his life, pray over his family, pray over his wife. It was just him there. God began to give me the words to pray. We spoke for a while afterwards. He started telling me about his marriage and it's in shambles and on the verge of divorce or getting ready to go through divorce and so forth. And then within a few weeks' time, I hear back from him. He said, Pastor, you, don't, you wouldn't believe it. He goes, since that day, you walked across the room and prayed for me. He goes, my marriage has completely turned around. Yeah. He said, everything has changed. My family is great. So many different things. And... and and all of a sudden, I look back and I think, how selfish is it if we don't listen to the Holy Spirit when he says, I just need you to do this. 
I just need you to walk. You don't even have to know the words to say. All you got to do is just pray. All you got to do is just listen. As I'm speaking in your ear, as I'm speaking in your heart, just begin to, to speak out the words that I tell you to speak. And all of a sudden, he begins to transform lives. So often it's happened over and over again. I've, God has spoke to me, go across the room, do this, do that. Go over here and speak to this person, speak to that person. Another person, I'm like, God was speaking to me. He says, you need to go talk to those two ladies. I need you to pray for this one. I said, well, God, that's a little awkward. I might scare them off. Two ladies sitting over there, and I'm a man. And he said, I need you to go pray with them. I said, all right, Lord. I walked over there. I said, you know, I don't know you guys. I apologize for interrupting. I said, but I feel like I'm supposed to come over here and pray for you. Lady kind of looks at me. She says, okay. I began to pray, and the lady begins to weep. And I started saying things like, God loves you. God forgives you. And over and over again, God forgives you. God forgives you. God forgives you. God. And, and, and a few of the things that I said over and over again within the prayer, it just was exactly what, what she was there for. She said, I had just met up with my, the, my counselor here. She said, I had an abortion recently and I haven't been able to live with myself. I had no idea if God forgave me for what I've done. She goes, I, I, I've literally been on the point of suicide and, and couldn't go forward. She goes, but when you come over to pray for us, she goes, you had no idea why I was here. She goes, but I was here because of this very reason. She goes, and every word you said in your prayer was confirmation for what I needed to hear from God. And I think, it wasn't me, but what if I just wouldn't have listened? What if I just wouldn't have went across the room? What if I was too prideful or too selfish or, or just not willing to do it? There's been times, I'm telling you what, uh, what's more hard than getting out of your comfort zone is when you don't listen and you leave and you know you've missed it because you heard from God and there's no going back to it. There's been times that we've, my wife's been with me that we've driven past and God said, you need to go back. Because there's somebody broke down on the side of the road, you've got to go pray for them. And we've gone back and prayed for people right there on the side of the road. There's been other times I, you wouldn't believe, I mean, you wouldn't believe the stories I could tell you of accidents that I was at the scene of. That, that miracles took place. There's a police officer, horrible accident, literally half a mile from here. I'm there at the scene. I jump out. I go to his car, run down there, uh, begin to pray for him. Miraculously, he came out great. So many different instances, uh, other places, that all of a sudden I'm at the scene of an accident, and I jump out and pray for people, and all of a sudden the pain goes away right there. At the scene of the accident, over and over again, that I've pulled people out of their cars. And I always think, how am I always at the scene of an accident? Some people would think I'm causing a lot of accidents. <laughs> it's not because I'm special. It's because I listen. There's been times I've taken different routes because God told me I need you to go this way. There's been times that I've, I've literally turned around from where I was going to go somewhere else, even though I was late to where I was going, because God put it on my heart so strong to go somewhere else, and I go there, and God would have a word for someone. Why? Because he loves us that much. There's been times that my vehicle has broke down time after time that I'm able to give people words because of the very moment or where I was that God allowed certain things to happen. All things work out for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Those who love him. Those who are obedient and follow him. And I think to God sometimes, God, can't we figure out a cheaper way to get me to win people to you? that my vehicle's breaking down. I think, Lord, I listen, but maybe I'm not listening clearly enough at the beginning when he says, hey, pull over here and let's go pray for somebody, and he has to, like, drop the axle out of your car. But being led by the Spirit. We look through this word, and how so many were led by the Spirit. 
We look through this word and we see the promises that come to pass because of the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. But since we're all in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5, talking about Moses, it says, And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn out on your feet. I begin to think of the times we're in. I begin to think of the frustration people are going through, the fear that's coming among among people. You realize, I mean, I talk to to Christians and non-Christians daily. And one thing that everybody can agree with is that we have no idea what tomorrow holds for us. I talked to the individuals. I'm telling you what, I was talking to a guy just, was it last night or the night before? He's an agnostic, so he says, talking with him, and he's talking politics. He's talking about certain people in the, in the White House and how horrible they are and how, how sick and perverted they are and how it doesn't even seem real to be the way they are. And I said, it's almost like they're demon-possessed, huh? He goes, you're right, I think they are. I said, it's kind of funny how you can believe in demons, but not in God. (laughs) And he looked at me for a moment, and he goes, you got me there. But even things like that, God will give you the words to say. God will give you the words as planting seeds in someone's life. I mean, we've just got our... Our old health club back that we sold, I believe we've got it back not only that God's going to bless us financially, but also to win some souls that didn't get won the last time around. To reach some people that wasn't able to be reached then, that maybe some seeds have been planted now, that God's going to do a work in their heart. Tell you when there's different ones that I, I've already come in contact with lately that, that we can be talking, and all of a sudden... I'll mention something about church. I mean, they can talk, 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 talk. I'll mention something about church, and it just gets quiet, and they, like, shut down. I'm like, all right, Lord, I know this is one of them you're trying to reach. I know this is somebody that, that you're wanting me to reach out to, that, that you're wanting to do something through. Deuteronomy 29, verse 9, it says, Therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all you do. He tells us what to do, and he tells us what we get. He didn't say, you may prosper in all that you do. But he gave us the commandment, keep the words of this covenant. I love what he said. He didn't just say, keep them and do them. Go out and do something. Go forward. Go, 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 and then this will happen. Do them, and you may prosper in all that you do. 14 through 18. begin to wonder, but until this time, why weren't they prospering? Why were things not always going right? It says, I make this covenant and with this oath, not with you alone, but with him who stands here with us today before the Lord our God, as well as with him who is not here with us today. It says, for you know that we dwelt in the land of Egypt and that we came through the nations which we passed by and saw their abominations and their idols. Listen, we saw their idols which were among them. And I love how it defines what their idols were. Wood and stone and silver and gold. America has done the same thing. I hate to always talk bad about the church, but we've got to know what got us here. And one thing in the church is there's been too much talk about physical prosperity that we've begun to worship it over him. God wants to prosper you. God wants to bless you. But if it's going to make you idolize the blessings... If it's going to make you put before, when we think of an idol, we think of of building a statue and bowing down to it. But he begins to become clear here that the idols which were among you are the daily wood and stone and silver and gold. 
your physical things that mean so much to you, your finances, your money, your job, all these very things that bring forth wealth to the nation, that you've built this up as an idol before me. It says, so that may not be among you, men or women, or family or tribe. It says, whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Who are the gods of this nation? The wealth. It says that there may not be among you root bearing bitterness or wormwood. This nation, we've got two different types of idols lately. We've got the men that look towards the government for all their needs. And then we got the ones that a lot of us today, that we don't look towards the government, but we look towards our jobs and our money and our finances to meet all our needs. And if the government and our jobs were taken away, let me ask you, will your needs still be met? Because your resource, the source in which you get your resources, is it God or is it man? Is it an idol that you've built up before yourself that you worship more than you do God? Is it what you put first in your life? I'm telling you, what is it when, when I get uh, paid, when I get a large sum of money, when I get different things that come in, I get excited about giving more. I get excited that I can do more for God. I get excited. I'm telling you what, the hardest thing about selling our, our, our first, our business that we had that was making a lot of cash flow, the hardest part was going, God, but now I won't have as much to give. The second hardest part was, God, this is what's providing for the church. This is what's providing for our ministry is this business. And if we give it away, he said, are you, he goes, in your business, do you believe that I'm providing for it? I said, yes, Lord. He said, so if we get rid of it, can I still provide for the church? You can't argue this, these things. It seems like he's always right. Very good record. But then every time I step out in faith, I watch God show up and show off. Yeah. I watch God perform miracles that I never thought it coming from. I watch God begin to do things that just begins to, to, to blow my mind away that, that, that is out of this world. But it, but it wouldn't happen if we didn't step out in faith. It wouldn't happen. We couldn't see the miracles that we see. Moses wouldn't have seen the miracles that he saw. Elijah wouldn't have seen the miracles that he saw. Joshua wouldn't have seen the miracles that they saw if he didn't step out in faith and in obedience and say, God, I'm listening to your guidance. God, I'm going to listen to the Spirit and wherever the Spirit directs me to go. Here's where I'll go, Lord. One of the definitions of worship is extravagant respect or admiration for or devotion to an object of esteem. And then in the definition, example of it, it says worship of the dollar. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. You know what? Maybe... There's a whole thing with Donald Trump. Maybe he'll be back in. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll get in another time. Maybe he won't. But I wonder if God isn't using him this term because too many people have idolized him. I wondered if, if people began to put their eyes on him rather than God and all of a sudden began to think he was the way that was going to pull us out of this when God's like, now their eyes are on man rather than me. What if I break everything down so their eyes can't be on man anymore and the only thing left if I break the government down, I break the financial prosperity down, I break all this down, then now all they have left is to put their eyes on me. But this is why he calls us to humble ourselves, to seek his face, to turn away from our sins. Why? Because he doesn't want this to happen, but what has to happen is to get us back on course with him. 
And just as a parent, when your, your child is off course with God, you're willing to allow God to do whatever it takes to get them back on course. And the same thing when his children are doing the same thing. He's like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my people back on course and serving me once again. I'm going to do whatever it takes. If they've got to go around a circle in Egypt, around Egypt to, to get to the promise in the wilderness, to get to the promise for 40 years going a circle, to get them back on track, that's what it's going to take. But so often we begin to look that the promise isn't there. That God has said, here's the promise. We've sought after the promise, but it hasn't come to pass. But the problem usually lies is because we're worshiping the promise rather than the promiser. Being led by the Spirit never just draws you to the promise, but it draws you to Him that leads you to the promise. Exodus 16, 4 through 5, if you will turn with me there. How many of y'all ever try to figure out what, what way God's going to do it? Who God's going to use to do it? How the, the provision's going to come in? How this is going to happen? But I love this. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Now when y'all are looking for a need, you really think it's going to... Is that your first thought? Oh, it's going to just start falling out of the skies from heaven. God does it in a way that just surpasses our, our way of thinking. He says, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather certain quota every day. He said that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Telling you what, God is looking to lead his church somewhere. There's a promise in here that God gave the church. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So that's the promise. But what God is doing today, I believe, is, is getting his people prepared to receive the promise. But in order for preparation, sometimes it hurts. In order for preparation, sometimes it's about getting rid of the idols that we've made in our life, getting rid of the things that we've, we've worshipped and we've put before God, that sometimes it has to be broken off of our lives in order for God to begin to come through and His Spirit to begin to flow on us. The promise is there, and what I've heard the church saying is this is the promise, but what lies behind the promise is a condition on how to get to the promise so what we have to begin to do is saying god i know you're going to hold your part of the deal you've said this you've spoken in your word that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh god and i know that i know that i know that your word is true but what do i need to start doing in preparation for what you're trying to do in my life what do I need to start eliminating out of my life? I'm telling you what, I want to humble myself. I don't want to get humbled again. Right. I've been down that road. I'm not standing up here saying, oh, I'm so humble. I'm saying we've got to start humbling ourselves in such a way that we don't have to worry about God saying, humble yourself and I'll heal the land. That all of a sudden we begin to, to clean ourselves up and become a spotless bride of who he's looking for. I don't want sin to, to be clogging up what God's trying to pour out on me. But he begins to rain things from heaven. He begins to pour things out. He begins to change things. Go to, with me to Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. So God's doing a work in his people. God's trying. I mean, God pours out fruit from heaven and they continue to complain. God begins to do something. And what God's trying to teach them is if you just listen to me, if you just listen to me, I'll show you the greater way. If you just listen to me and listen to my words and listen to my commandment and listen to how I'm leading you, I'll lead you to the promise. Don't look for the promise. Look towards me and I'll bring the promise before you. 
And all of a sudden, a new generation of people begin to rise up. I believe this generation of people were sick and tired of seeing what their parents did. I believe they were sick and tired of seeing their parents live in a lifestyle that they're going in circles over and over again and they're never receiving what God has for them because they're complaining and they begin to, to sit back and watch and say, this isn't the life that I want to live. And all of a sudden Joshua begins to come up and it says, after the death of, death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... It came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying this. It says, Moses, my servant is dead. So now he begins to say this. Therefore, Joshua, arise, go over the river. I love this. He says, you and all this people to the land which I am giving them. What does he say? Arise and go. He doesn't say, here's the land. Here's the promise. He's leading. The spirit is leading them to receive the promise. The Spirit is leading them to something great. The Spirit is there saying, here's what you need to do. If you'll follow what I'm telling you to do, I'll show you what's on the other side. He says, arise and go to the land which I have given them, the children of Israel. That was the leading and the promise. He leads them by a right, telling them to rise and go. He tells them what to do. It was the leading, and then the promise is the land which I've given them. But I love this. He's... It says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, so what's that? That's the promise. This is the promise. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I've already promised Moses. Here's the promise. Then it says, the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and the land of Hittites, it says, and the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. It says, Now man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. What's that? That's the promise. Here's the promise. I'm going to give you this. As I was with him, I'll be with you. I'll give you this territory. There'll be a, no man shall stand before you all the days of your life. He goes on with more of the promises. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. But then what does he say? He begins to give the leading of how to get to the promise. He says, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. That's the leading. It says, for this people shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to my fathers. It says, for the land which I swore to my fathers. What was that? The promise. So be strong and courageous is the leading. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to to your fathers to give them the promise. Only be strong and very courageous. I love he says it again, but this time he says be very courageous that you may observe to do. What does he say? Be strong, you have to be courageous, and now you've got to observe. You've got to listen. You've got to begin to be led. It says to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. What's he doing? He's leading again. It says do not turn from it or to the right or to the left, the leading. It says that you may prosper wherever you go, the promise. So he leads you to it, the promise. Here's the promise, but here's how to get to it. Here's the promise, but you've got to do this. Here's the promise, be of good cheer, be of good faith, be strong, be courageous. Here's how I'm leading you. I'm going to lead you to the promise, but if you want to get there, you've got to follow me. And he continues to go on over and over and over again. Here's the leading. Here's the promises. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. The leading. But you shall meditate in it day and night. The leading. What's he doing? He's saying, you need to get in my word. You need to get close to me. You need to recognize my voice and begin to recognize my words. So when I speak, you know who I am. You recognize me as a sheep recognizes the shepherd's voice. You'll begin to know who I am, the Father. And as I command you to go, as I direct your path, you'll listen and you'll be able to make it to the promise because you've already heard my voice. You know what my voice sounds like and you know how to go. But he's saying it could be tough, it could be hard, so you're going to have to be strong and very courageous. Right. Don't just give up because it doesn't seem like the promise is there. Meditate on the word day and night. It says that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. So let's step back. The, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, the leading, but you shall meditate in it day and night, the leading, that you may observe to do according all that which is in it, the leading. 
So he's like, oh my gosh, we got to do all this. He goes, for then, then, I love this. This is so great. Who will make your ways prosperous? He says, then you will make your ways prosperous. He didn't even say, I'll make your ways. He says, because of you being led by my spirit and you being obedient and you're doing what I've called you to do, you will make your own life prosperous. Amen. So all of a sudden, when we begin to look at our lives and say it's not prosperous, is it God's fault or is it our fault? Yeah. He didn't say, I'm going to make your blades prosperous. He began to say, then, listen, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So what do you do? The leading of the book, the law shall not depart from your mouth. The leading on meditating on it day and night. The leading of doing, observing and doing according to all that is written. He said, then, here's the promise, you will make your ways prosperous and then you will have good success. But here's what I love. Individuals go to the word prosperous and they think, well, pastor, I've been listening and I don't have a lot of money. Is that where your heart's at that you think prosperous is just in money? That's where we've got to go back and reevaluate our life. Is that all we think that prosperous is? I have a prosperous life because I'm telling you what, I got God in it and he's leading me to where, I mean, I consider prosperous, listen, that I'm able to speak to individuals and change the help, change their life for eternity. Now that's prosperous, prospering in all your ways. And then all of a sudden when your heart begins to get to a place that you don't care about the other things, but you're willing to just give the other things, all of a sudden God's like, okay, now their heart isn't worshiping it, I can give it to them. Now their heart is instilled in wood and silver and gold and bronze that, that now I can do something more, but if they're going to worship it, how can I do it? You know what came my downfall? One of the, the, I, when I spoke at Freedom Church a few weeks ago, I, uh, a week or so ago, I, I spoke about part of my testimony, and part of my testimony was money. How did I fall? I had, had the things in my life that, that I wanted. I wanted popularity. I wanted fame. I wanted money. Uh, and all of a sudden, I began to get it all. And even in the midst of getting it, I knew that it was from the devil. Because the Lord would speak to me, and he'd say, look at this. Look at that. You know it's the enemy giving you these things, so you'll go down the, right path, the wrong path. And what do I do? Well, yeah, but I really enjoy it. And then I'd cry at night because I was so miserable. I'm telling you what, it don't matter what you have. If you don't have God, it's not, it's not fulfilling. It's not prosperous. Then he says, have I not commanded you? For a third time, he says it again. First he says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. And for the third time, he says, now be strong and of good courage. I think he's trying to tell them something. Here's going to be the key point. It's going to be tough. It's going to look impossible. But if you'll be strong and you'll have courage, you can get through this. He says, do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He's like, I have the greatest promise waiting for you. But you've got to listen. And when you listen, I'm going to lead you to it. But just because I'm leading you to it, by the natural eyes, there's another part where he says, you will not see, you will not hear, and so forth. But he's saying, here's the deal. It's not going to look what you think. It's not going to look like it's just glamorous. All of a sudden it goes on and they go to war. God tells them all this and what happens? They go to war. God, I thought you would never leave us. You told me not to be afraid nor dismayed. God, what are you doing? But then you go back to all the words that he said. Do not be afraid. Be strong and of good courage. All right, Lord. If you're leading me and where I'm at today looks impossible and it doesn't look like the promise, I know that I'm going to keep following you and I'll get to the promise. 
I know that even though it looks impossible and it looks hard, that you've forewarned me to be strong, to be courageous, to know that I shouldn't be afraid or dismayed, and to also know, Lord, that you're with me wherever I go. And if you're with me wherever I go, all things that look impossible are now possible because you're with me, Lord. Jesus, I know this because your word says it, God, and I know you've taken me down this path, and I know this, and I know that, God, but even though it looks impossible, I'm going to keep pushing forward, God. Even when it looks too hard, God, here I am because you've told me what I need to do to get to the other side, God. The Holy Spirit's always leading. Many follow, listen to this, church, many follow to provision and others follow through to the promise. I think about Moses to Joshua. They were following to the provision. They got the food. They got their water. But they couldn't get to the promise. But it doesn't mean that the promise isn't there. It just means how obedient are you willing to be? A lot of people in life, they're obedient enough to, for God to provide for all their needs but they're not obedient enough to get to the promise. Ten through eleven it says this in Joshua one. It says, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourself. For within three days I, I love this. God gives us warnings. I believe even right now there may be a lot of warning signs going on all around us. Pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourself for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go into the, into possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. So there's the land, but what they had to do, they had to go. They had to prepare. Many have provision, but not willing to take possession. Say it again, church. Many Christians have provision, but not willing to take possession. Many believe for provision, but their faith stops before possession. Many believe for provision, but their faith stops before possession. I'll think about that for a moment. I believe God will provide, but I'm not stepping out any further than that because this is as far as my faith goes. I believe God will, will provide for, for, for my food, will provide for my family, but when it comes to stepping out in greater faith to receive the promise, I can't go that far because I haven't built up my faith there and I'm not willing to build up my faith to get there. Well, pastor, you don't understand You know where the church has gotten over the years? And many of us, we've all gotten comfortable. We know God will provide for our every need. But do you know where this universe, the world would be today if the church stopped just knowing God would provide and start stepping out in faith to receive the promise? What if God said, I will give you a tithe of this world that you'll win for me. And if you never see it come to pass, even though God spoke it, it doesn't mean that it wasn't there waiting for you. Maybe it was that you never stepped out in faith to go after it. I believe in this season that God is calling many men and women to begin to rise up in their ministries. A many, many, I'm telling you, I believe we're going to work together as a larger body. I believe we're going to work together as, as individuals doing things. I believe God is shifting the way that, that we do church in America. That it's not just about individuals being under. We need to have a covering. Don't get me wrong. But it's not just about, oh, well, if you're going to do ministry, it's just going to be in this house or that house. And you got to do this or that and be directed. But I believe God is raising up more people than we've seen in our lifetime. 
that will begin to rise up and know what God has called them to do. They'll begin to step up in faith and begin to go out. I know as God was first calling us into ministry, I'm telling you what, God was, was, was shaking our world even with prophetic words. We we're at our old church and we wanted, uh, I mean, my thing was uh, at church, how are you going to put me in ministry here at my church that I'm at? Well, God, if you if you called me to, to start a church, then I guess he needs to plant, you know, the pastor needs to plant me in a church or he needs to provide for the building or he needs to do this. But God was teaching me that I'm not relying on man. I'm relying on him. And all of a sudden, I mean, people used to make fun of me and my wife because every time a prophet or someone that wasn't a prophet would come and speak at our church, we would get a prophetic word even from the people that say, I've never done this before. But the very interesting thing was, so many of the group that was around us and the people that were receiving words that you'd begin to hear the words for them and it says, in this house you will do this and in this house you will do this and in this house you'll do this. And then they'd get to us and give us the word and they said, in your ministry. And I was like, but God, I love it here, Lord. <laughs> this is my why, why, why can I be in this house, Lord? But I believe in this next season, yes, we're going to work together as a body, but I believe there's going to be a lot more going on that God is calling his people to rise up and do something. That he's going to call them to go out and do greater things. I mean, greater things will we do than Jesus did. That I'm telling you what, there, there is such a moving of the Holy Spirit right now. There is a shifting in the atmosphere. There is a shifting in the atmosphere that God is, listen, God is shaking the church and God is stirring things up. That as he's shaking and he's stirring, people are beginning to fall. Listen, I'm telling you what, I'm seeing this right now. Even with the, the great falling away, what happens is as he's shaking the church, people are beginning to fall off that weren't really there in the first place, that people were beginning to fall off in a way. But as he begins to shake, it begins to wake individuals up and it begins to stir something in them and they begin to rise up with great courage. They begin to go forward not afraid. They begin to know that God is with them and hasn't left them and will not forsake them. And they begin to rise up and do greater things. And all of a sudden they begin to say, I'm tired of being complacent. I'm I'm tired of being comfortable. I'm tired of sitting back. We see what's not only going on in this nation, but in the world. That God is shaking and shifting. God is shaking and shifting. You're going to hear these words again. Shaking and shifting. Mark those words down. Shaking and shifting. That God is doing something today. That is raising people up. That have been dormant. That have been lukewarm. That have sat back for year after year year even decade after decade that all of a sudden he's waking them up that they said i've waited and i've slept for too long my time is short i'm rising up and i'm listening to he who has been calling me for decades and decades those that are young that begin to say i will not be like my parents i will not be like the other generation that went in circles and circle and circle and never got to the promise there is a new generation that is waking up today that I believe God is doing something in and shaking and shifting that they say I will not be like my death the last generation that I will begin to go forward and not allow what the enemy is trying to do to come to pass that as the enemy tries to come against us we will come against him even greater and stronger and we will be of good courage we will be strong we will be mighty we will bring forth the power of God that the world has never seen before we we will begin to go forward with authority and we will take authority as we have been dealt it and the way God has given it to us. We will begin to go forward with this power and with this authority. And as it tries to come against us, we will begin to resist the devil and he will flee from us. We will go forward knowing that the hand of God is upon us, knowing that God has called us to it and he's seeing us through it, knowing that there's provision and there's promise and knowing as we go forward, he says, 
says, I will be with you. And I'm telling you today that there are individuals God is shaking, that God is shifting, that God is moving. And I'm telling you tonight, even in this place, you will look around this house and you will begin to see people begin to rise up. You will begin to look around and say, I never thought they would do it. And when I looked around the room, they were the last one on my mind. But all of a sudden, God began to move in them and they began to know it wasn't by their strength, but by his might and his strength. And God began to use them in a greater way. And I'm telling you tonight, church, that I'm not going to stand by and let God use everyone around me and me not be used by him too. I'm going to say, God, here I am, your servant. Use me, God. I just want to be an empty vessel to be used by you, Father. If it means to go on the front lines, God, that's where I'll go. If it means to get in my prayer closet all day long, that's where I'll be, God. If it's for counseling, if it's for encouraging, Father, whatever it is that you've called me to do, God, that's where I'll go and that's where I'll be, God. Father, when you call me to go across the room, when you call me to go out in front of the abortion clinics, God, when you call me to go to the White House, God, even though it looks like I have no voice, God, that's exactly what I'll do, God. And when you tell me to go across the world and I don't know where I'm going, but all I heard was go, that's where I'll go, Lord. And I'm telling you today, God is speaking to his people. God is getting ready to tell you go, but he's not telling you where to go. You just begin to go as he leads. And as you begin to go, you'll begin to see things come to pass you never thought possible. You'll begin to see the provision. You'll begin to see God provide just as he did with Elijah. He says, go. There's a drought in the land. Go. Elijah had to go. And when he went, he saw what God was giving him and what he was saving him from. I'm telling you today, there's some of you, you think you're being pulled out of your job today. It's not because of the enemy. It's because God's hand is upon you and he's pulling you away. He's taking you out of the enemy. He's releasing you from where the enemy was trying to destroy you. And I'm telling you, God is on the move. I am going to follow God and I encourage you to run forward and get God wherever you are. That's where I'll be too, God. Wherever you call me to go, that's where I'll go in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God, I even saw some of you. Mm. Let me tell you what I saw because you might need this here in, in the coming days. Even in certain places. Even in places like the stores, the coffee shops, different places that you go daily. Even where people recognize you. That there will be times that you'll feel like a fool. There will be times where God says, I need you to speak this out right now. I need you to begin to just say what I tell you to say. You say, God, but who do I say it to? He says, I'm telling you just to say it with a loud voice and say it right where you're at because individuals need to hear this word right now. And I'm telling you what, you may feel foolish. You may not think you can do it, but I'm telling you today, I see God begin to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I see God begin even within the stores, within the schools, within your job place. You say, God, but I don't want to be one of those crazy Christians. God, I don't want to look like one of those people that looked foolish God I'm telling you what you will not look foolish what you're going to look like is one that's been obedient to God and listening to what he's speaking to you to do there will be times you say God I would never do that God why is this on my mind God why is this on my heart but I'm telling you today even if it's for the one soul that I'm trying to reach that would have never listened if you wouldn't have just done what you've done I'm telling you what God's beginning to move in a different way that you've ever seen before it's not because God wasn't moving that way before it's because people weren't obedient to move that way before. That God's beginning to stir greater things up within our lives, within the church. I'm telling you what, there is going to be a great move. There's going to be a new move. And I'm telling you what, with this move, it's not just going to be under one man. But God's going to begin to use a generation of people to begin to stir up this move. God's going to begin to use a people. I'm telling you what, tonight, church, we've seen revivals in the past that it was under one man. We've seen revivals in the 
the past that was under one church. We've seen revivals in the past that was under one city. But I'm telling you tonight, God's not doing it like he did it before. The only reason it was one place and one city and one town and one church, because only one man was listening. But today, God is beginning to shake. God is beginning to move. And mighty men will begin to rise up and listen to what they're called to do. That all over the place, I'm telling you tonight, all over the place, individuals in their homes, revival will break out. I'm telling you tonight, in the churches, on the streets, in your job places, I'm telling you tonight, I see individuals getting so scared of what's before them that they begin to come to you because your voice has risen up and they say there's something in you that's bold, strong, and courageous. And whatever you have in this season is what I want to. And whatever you've been showing that you have not been in fear and you have not been dismayed. I have noticed there's something different about you. I'm telling you what, ministries will begin to grow. Ministries will begin to be birthed because of individuals coming to you and saying, I want what you have. What is it that's different about you? How have you been able to make it? Why aren't you scared and why aren't you afraid? I see joy coming out of you every day of your life. It's something I don't have and I've been looking for. This will be a new church like we've never seen it before. This will be a new glory and a new power like we've never experienced before. It's going to become a time that people are looking for the truth. People are looking for something. But instead of this time them coming to the church and finding the same thing that they found in the world, they will begin to come to the church. They will begin to come to your home. They will begin to come before you and they'll feel power. They'll feel depression release off of them. They'll feel a change in their life knowing that what they've been looking for they've begun to find knowing that there's something real about your God that it's not a God that you just say that you worship and it's not a God that you come to church to on Sundays but it's a God that you're abiding under his wings it's a God that you're living in his presence it's a God that when you leave church he's still with you it's a God that when you're in the midst of uh, violence and you're in the midst of hate and you're in the midst of crime and you're in the midst of depression that your God is with you when the attacks are coming against you that you don't even feel it because the spirit of God is with you and I'm telling you tonight I'm seeing it so clearly that God is doing something powerful he's waking people up and if you'll listen you'll be a part of it too if you'll just begin to say God here I am speak to me he'll begin to say I've been speaking to you and I'm glad that you're finally listening I'm glad that you're here I'm glad for your obedience because I bless those who are obedient he loves those who are obedient I'm telling you what obedience pleases God faith pleases God and I'm telling you what this is going to be a new time and a new day that all of a sudden the body of Christ comes together and we come in unity to please God oh who praise you Jesus who Mm. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I just feel a glory cloud. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. begin to seek his face right now church that's God right now what he's leading you to many of you know the promise But the way to it's obedience. Many of you here even know tonight that God's been calling you to something greater. You may not even know what it is. You may know that God's calling you into to ministry. You may know that God's putting something on your heart for something more. I'm telling you tonight, he says, by obedience, meditate on the word day and night. 
Even in these passages I've given you tonight, I'm telling you, church, God's leading you, He's guiding you, He's directing you, but He's also preparing you that in the midst of trying to get to the promise, the enemy will come before you and he'll try to stop you. But do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, but know that I am with you, He says. Hmm, yes, Lord. Some of you will be shocked of what happens next. He says, but do not be afraid. But know that I am with you. Hmm. Some of you will be shocked for what happens next. Huh. Yes, Lord. I believe the Lord always gives warnings. He has all through history. And I don't believe the Lord would say this so strongly tonight. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed, for I am with you. We thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm. <laughs> yes, Father God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we rejoice in you, God. <laughs> we rejoice in you, Lord. For you're always with us, God. When the attacks come, oh, yes, Lord God. There's something greater on the other side. There's something greater on the other side, church. When you see it, don't be afraid or dismayed. But know the enemy is trying to keep you from where God has called you. <laughs> yes, Father God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So they were all in one accord. And like a mighty rushing wind. Father, tonight, let your presence rush through this place, God. Let it heal. Let it transform. Make a way, Father. Yes, Father God. Yes, Lord. Make a way, Father. Open up their spiritual eyes, Lord. Open up the spiritual eyes, Father God. We know you're leading, Father. We know that you know what's best. Yes, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I think God's still doing something in here tonight. I feel like we're done with the message. I feel like God's still stirring on some hearts. Oh, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Father God. We worship you, Lord. Father, we need you in this house, God. We need you in our lives, Lord. Oh, I love your sweet presence, Father. <laughs> There's nothing else like it, Lord. <laughs> Amen. 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 
<laughs> Just worship him however you feel led. This might be the start right now of you being led by the Spirit. Even right now in the midst of believers, God may be speaking to you. This is how I want you to worship me. This could be your first step of obedience. David was so excited when he got in the presence of the Almighty God that he didn't care what was said to be right. He didn't care how a king should act. He didn't care about how a king should look. All that he cared about was that he was in the presence of the Almighty God. All that he cared about was rejoicing because he made it. Rejoicing because there his God was. Where his heart was searching for, he found. And I'm telling you tonight, you begin to worship God like you found him. You begin to worship God like he set you free. You begin to worship God like he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross for you. You begin to worship him like you've been forgiven. Like he's given you eternal life. You begin to worship him like you found all the answers to every problem. The altar's open if you want to use the altar. If you want to cry, cry. If you feel like singing, sing it. If you feel like dancing, dance. Like there's someone here tonight. You've been a Christian for a long time, but you don't feel the excitement you used to feel. You don't get excited like you used to get excited. Maybe you could even say that you've you've blamed it on the church, you've blamed it on the worship, you've blamed it on the pastor. But I'm telling you tonight, I feel the Lord saying that he wants to fill you back up. He wants to bring that excitement back. He wants to put that joy back in you. Someone here tonight, you feel like you even, and I know this is a Friday night, which normally it's the ones that are excited more for church, but there's even someone here tonight that you feel like you, you, you drag yourself in here. You feel like you drag yourself to church. You've almost felt convicted because you haven't been excited about it. 
You almost feel convicted because you've been dragging yourself in here. But I feel the Lord saying that he's seen your diligence and your obedience. He said, even that when it feels like that I'm not there, you know that I am. Even when it feels like you can't feel me, there's been others around that you've, you've looked to the left and you've looked to the right and you said, how is everyone else feeling this? But I'm not. Maybe not tonight, but in general. He says, but because you haven't given up, I'm doing a new thing in you. The guilt I'm replacing with passion. The feeling down is replacing with joy. Whether it's this church or another church, but I feel like I'm saying that when you walk back into church the next time, You'll have a sigh of relief because you'll feel it again. Does somebody here have a word they feel like they're supposed to say? There's somebody here God's been speaking to. Whoever you are, I'll give you a minute, even if you need to pray about it. Maybe even felt like I have in, in restaurants in different places when God says to go do something, but you say, I don't know what I was supposed to say. Maybe you don't know what you're supposed to say, but you feel like you're supposed to say something. Whoever you are, if that's you, whoever it is, come for it. something the Lord spoke to you, maybe something something on your heart, I don't know. Yes, Lord God. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. There's somebody here with something on their heart. Whoever you are,
Mūsē tādāk. Miesu. 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 Mūsē kundere. Oja sanara. Maja sundere. Mieja sundere. Maja sundi. Oja. Oja sandāja kusatāja. Jēja su, mjera sundere. Jēja sundere, kā jēja sundere. Bla sandala, u flambāja. Jēja sundere, jēja sundere. Jēja sundere, jēja sundere. U sandāja sundere, līdī fanda no moši kēji. Oh, seek my face, seek my face, come into the secret place with me, oh, hallelujah, come close to me, oh, it's where you'll find me, come closer. Do not be afraid, cause I am with you. Do not fear, I will give you rest. My child, oh, come closer to me now. I will give you rest. Do not be afraid. I'm your father. days these days are closer they're getting closer and closer these days are getting closer and you're gonna need to hear my voice and you're gonna, you're gonna need to know how to be led by the spirit as your pastor says I want more time with you I need more time with you Change the plans. Change the plans. Stay with me. Come closer. Come closer. If you've never had anybody that's close to you, let me be close to you. Because I love you. You're my child. You're mine. You belong to me. Hallelujah. Come closer. In the secret places where you'll find me. Praise me. Praise me. Praise me. Worship me. We will have a we'll have a time together. Just praise me. You are loved and you are treasured.
Father, we thank you tonight. <laughs> thank you for your spirit, God. Thank you that you give us rest. You give us peace. And you give us joy. Thank you for your sweet presence. Yes, Lord. I believe what David was doing when he, he fought to get the ark back. When he fought to get the presence of God before him. When he fought whatever he needed just to get God in his presence. The Lord's saying tonight, sometimes we've got to fight. Maybe you have to fight off the distractions. Maybe, as Karen said, to make time. Sometimes you gotta, you got to fight with yourself to make time. Sometimes you got to fight with the enemy. But I'm telling you what, when you get there and you get in his presence, it was all worth it and even more. David's heart was a heart after God, a heart after his own heart. And I want to see a church that God goes, that church, my body, is a body after my own heart. Father, I thank you for encouraging us tonight. I thank you for building up our faith. I thank you that tonight you gave us strength, Lord. I believe you departed a new level of strength in our life, Father. I thank you for being here. Not only do you show up, but you're already here waiting for us, God. You inhabit our praises. I thank you so much as a pastor. I'm so proud. To see a group of people not looking at their watches, but just being consumed by you. A people that love your presence, God. I thank you for each and every individual, God, as you, you told them to come tonight, that they're obedient and they made it, Father. I believe they were blessed tonight. They listened. <laughs> And they received. We thank you tonight. We praise you. We love you. Be with us this weekend. Father, I just believe you have something huge for this Sunday, God. Father, I ask right now that you bring the people in, God, that you want here. Father, that you have your way in this house, God. Father, speak to us on who we need to, to bring into this house Sunday, God. That we listen to you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight and we love you in Jesus Christ's name. Whew. I'm not going to release you guys. You can keep worshiping. You can keep praying. You can leave. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to leave it just like this. Amen.
If there's anyone else that I didn't pray for, but you say, you know what, I need prayer. Doesn't matter what it is, maybe you say, I just need more faith. Maybe you say, I need more of God. Yes, I just want prayed for. Maybe you, maybe you need a healing. Maybe you need a touch. Whatever it might be, but you're here and you do need prayer or you want prayer for anything, just feel free to come forward. I don't want you to leave this place without receiving what God has for you tonight. Like I said, we're going to continue worshiping. You're free to leave at any time. Totally up to you guys. You're all we've ever needed. Keep playing, keep.
someone right now. You're holding someone right now who's felt unfathered. 